Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I was taking a look at a red-white tokens deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck has a bit of a twist as we're playing with two copies of Elish Norn Grand Cenobite, the 7 mana for 7 legendary Praetor with Vigilance added in the latest anthology expansion, gives other creatures we control plus 2 plus 2, and creatures our opponents control get minus 2 minus 2. It's an incredibly powerful anthem effect that often decimates the opponent's board. But how are we playing Elish Norn? 7 mana is pretty expensive. Well, that's where the 4 copies of Transmogrify come in handy, the 4 mana sorcery that exiles target creature that creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card and put it onto the battlefield. And since Elish Norn is the only actual creature in the deck, we're guaranteed to hit it if we transmogrify one of our many creature tokens. So that's how we're cheating Elish Norn into play. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, it's a pretty standard looking red-white tokens deck with Intangible Virtue as another nice payoff card added in the latest anthology, the 2-man enchantment giving creature tokens we control plus 1 plus 1 and Vigilance. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck at 1 mana, the full playset of Legion's Landing, which generates a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink when it enters the battlefield, and then if we attack with 3 or more creatures we get to transform it into a Danto the first fort, so that can also potentially help us ramp, and maybe that way we can hardcast Elish Norn, which is why we're still playing it over a card like Craterhoof Behemoth, which could also be very effective in a deck like this, but at least Elish Norn we have a chance of hardcasting in a red-white deck. Then we also have two copies of Satyr's Cunning to smooth out our curve, give us an extra 1 mana play, and potentially a 3 mana play thanks to the escape, making a 1-1 Satyr token that cannot block. Then at 2 mana, besides the full playset of Intangible Virtue, which we're not often going to play on turn 2 since we would rather make more tokens first, we have the full playset of Raise the Alarm, making two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens at instant speed. Two copies of Dragon Fodder, as one of the weaker token makers, could also play Servo Exhibition, although there are some hate cards for artifacts specifically, so we're probably better off with the Goblin tokens. And then the full playset of Forbidden Friendship, which makes a hasty 1-1 one, one red dinosaur creature token, and a non-hasty white human soldier creature token. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of History of Banalia, which generates a 2-2 Knight with Vigilance on the first and second chapter, and on the third and final chapter our knights get plus two plus one until end of turn. And then at four mana, besides the full playset of Transmogrify, we've got another nice finisher here with Heroic Reinforcements, which generates two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens, and until end of turn, creatures we control get plus one plus one and gain haste. So that can also be relevant alongside our History of Benalia. We can make a knight token with the second chapter, and then give it that very same knight token plus one plus one and haste, thanks to the reinforcements, so it can attack right away. And then another curve topper added in Strixhaven is Lorehold Command, a 5 mana instant that lets us choose two modes between making a 3 2 red and white spirit creature token. Creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 and indestructible and haste until end of turn, so that's another nice anthem effect that can let us win combat. And then we can also deal 3 damage to any target and gain 3 life, or we can sacrifice a permanent to draw 2, so a lot of flexibility there as well. And then of course our two copies of Elish Norn, which we would rather not draw, but every now and then we could still hard cast. And then the mana base includes a few castles as well, giving us more late game mana sinks, with Castle Ardenvale making 1-1 one, one tokens, and Castle Ember is a nice anthem effect, giving our creatures plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. And then we've got 4 of each basic land, and then 4 Inspiring Vantage, 4 Needle Verge Pathway, and 4 Sacred Foundry. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Landing into friendship, hopefully pick up white mana for history. And then we'll be off to the races. Although of course if we transform Legion's Landing, we'll have our double white for history as well. So just needs our tokens to survive. Right, that also works. Opponent on Teamer. And with an end of turn brainstorm. Into the north for ramp. 
Well, we get to player history and next turn potentially reinforcements could already be lethal. If we suspect a sweeper, we could also go for an end of turn raise the alarm, which I also don't hate. So we could deal three, opponent falls to 15, end of turn raise, five, six, seven tokens, each dealing two, that's 14 damage. So it would be one short of lethal. Close call. I think I do still go for history. And then we still get our second knight to potentially give haste to with reinforcements. Or we can decide to go history, raise the alarm. Alright, so our opponent does have Anger of the Gods to wipe the board. So yeah, I think we'll stick to our original plan of history plus raise. And end of turn raise also helps us play around another sweeper a little bit better. And then history into history is also a nice sequence. As they will uh, pump each other. That opponent's got a lot of mana. And Chandra, Awakened Inferno, can wipe the board here. Although we should be able to finish her off with the uh, end of turn raise into reinforcements at least. And in fact, do we have enough for lethal friendship? into reinforcements. Yeah, this looks pretty lethal to me. All right, so despite two sweeper effects, we still managed to get there onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a nice curve out hand, including Transmogrify up against a Lurus deck. So, have to be a little careful with our castle that we don't play it after playing in just Inspiring Vantage. But otherwise, turn 1 Cunning, turn 2 Fodder, turn 3 History, hopefully turn 4 Transmogrify to find Elishnorn. Opponent is on Black Red, so we might see a discard spell take care of Transmogrify. For now Inquisition can take Transmogrify, but that will let the opponent know about our intentions, so they might keep up instant speed removal. So we can transmogrify for Elishnorn. Our opponent takes history, picked up another transmogrify, so that's good if they have a thought seize. And then Satyr's Cunning, pretty nice against a discard heavy deck, as we'll be able to escape it a few times. Thought seize, gonna have a look and seize the second copy of transmogrify. So they wouldn't be able to take both, but still takes one of them. Maybe another Inquisition for Dragon Fodder. Nope, just a Blood Chief's Thirst on our token, that's fine. Another Transmogrify. Alright, well, we'll play Dragon Fodder. And then next turn we can escape Satyr's Cunning at the very least. Opponent puts Slurs in their hands. We top decked Elishnor, not what we wanted to see. So, still need land 4, and the disaster scenario of drawing our second Elishnorn is also a reality here. Alright, we'll just play history. Opponent might be keeping up shock, which can kill our token in response to Transmogrify, but doesn't seem to be the case. And as soon as we put Elishnorn in play, Allures will die on the spot. We're also one land from just pumping our creatures with Castle Ambrith. Right, another Dragon Fodder. Yeah, we'll just be patient here. Could attack with a Knight, that's probably fine. Although I guess they would trade for Pyromancer and just replay it. So the thing we want to avoid is Transmogrify failing to put Elishnorn in play in case our opponent has like a cheap burn spell. So one thing we can do is target one of our knights after it gets the plus one bonus. That way we can play around a two damage effect like Colagans Command or Shock. 
opponent going to claim Croxa. Make us discard again. And yeah, they can bring it back with Lurus once more, so they will empty out our entire hand, unfortunately. So there goes our Transmogrify plan. And there's a land that turned too late. Although I can still attack and pump with Castle at least. Well, probably not going to draw another Transmogrify since we drew three of the four copies. Our opponent is going to lose Lurus at least. And yeah, next turn another all-out attack with Castle Emberth could be enough to cross the finish line. And Dreadhorde Arcanists can be given haste with fame. And that can cast a Bloodchief's Thirst to maybe kill our knight here. And that makes another token with Paramancer, so... Opponent's got three blockers now, which does keep them alive. Although Intangible Virtue, not a bad top deck. Now our tokens don't trade for the elementals. Opponent will have to trade away the Pyromancer. Yeah, we were very close to putting Elish Nord in play, which would have won us the game on the spot. Opponent had just the right interaction, but looks like we might still get there. Claim the Firstborn, steals our knights. Opponent has a couple discard spells and another claim they can cast with Arcanist. Attacks with all. And yeah, might as well... Double block Arcanist here. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one landing, turn two probably raise the alarm. And then if we can transform our Legion's Landing, we can even cast our Reinforcements a little sooner up against Goblins. Yeah, probably still stick to the plan here. Playing Dragon Fodder making Goblins could actually be relevant against the Goblins deck if um, they are playing with Gem Palm Incinerator, because that means it can potentially deal more damage, although Probably not super relevant against tokens. Opponent even got a sweet Krenko Snoop interaction, letting them make an extra goblin token. We'll take two. And yeah, if they can cast Krenko next turn, it's probably game over. Unless we can top deck something like uh, Transmogrify for Elishnorn. Tank with a team. Because Krenko is just going to make too many tokens for us to deal with. So yeah, we will need Transmogrify. Or we need to hope our opponent doesn't have land 4. They have land 4, so that's a hasty Krenko coming in. The first activation is going to make 4 tokens. Which also get plus 1 plus 1. I guess we can still get a good attack in with Heroic Reinforcements. But it's probably going to be our last good attack for a while. Opponents just chomping to preserve their life total, but that also means they have fewer goblins to leverage Krenko. So that buys us more time to... Hopefully top deck a Transmogrify. Which would be pretty effective here. Goblin Warchief on top means they can potentially play Muxus next turn. And a Wily Goblin. Making a treasure still lets them cast Warchief. Second Chieftain even. So now the opponent's Goblins no longer die to an Elishnorn. 
So I don't think we have any good attacks. Just gotta sit back and then... Yeah. Now with double chieftain... Even Elishnorn is not gonna be enough. Since all the opponent's creatures get... Plus two, plus two, so they'll survive the Elishnorn minus two, minus two. Opponent attacks with all. We'll have to do some math here. So that's 16 3 3 tokens. Yeah, I'm afraid that's just game over. Can try to double block Chieftain, block Chieftain, and then shun block a bunch. But that's still more than enough. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and what do we think of this? Yeah, looks okay. We've got a Legion's Landing, we're pretty likely to transform, which will make our double white for history, and then reinforcements looks like a great finisher. Can even transform our Legion's Landing through a potential removal spell, thanks to the hasty token from the second friendship. Opponents with a Crawling Baron, so it could be a Callless Ramp deck, which typically doesn't interact a whole lot early on. And no two mana Ramp card is also unusual. Well, I'm kind of liking going wide, although. Yeah, we can still Satyr's Cunning and History of Banalia here. So let me attack. For two Callless mana, I don't expect any. Interaction. And then next turn reinforcements can even give our second night token haste. And that might already be lethal. Three mana, still all colorless. And a power stone shard to play. That's probably not gonna cut it. So yeah, turn four reinforcements. And that's gonna be game over. If you've ever played M19 Limited, you know how powerful heroic reinforcements can be, and proving it here once again. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. A landing into Dragon Fodder with double intangible virtue to pump them up. And then eventually we'll cast a Lorehold command. Which is often Sir Point to Sacrifice deck. Still gonna play Dragon Fodder for now. And then Intangible Virtue also means we can potentially save our creatures from Mayhem Devil triggers. And we potentially get to transform Landing too, which will give us more mana. And now Transmogrify is also a very exciting addition. Could technically cast it next turn if we draw land and our creatures survive. And opponent's got to claim to steal our vampire. And that's gonna get sacrificed to the oven. So no transformed legions landing for us. And a thought sees gonna have a look. Might take our transmogrify. And so it does. Opponent is down to 10 in the meantime. And their 
third land's gonna be tapped. Another thought is gonna put him to eight. Has to take the intangible virtue. And a cold run familiar. Alright, that's gonna stabilize them pretty well. We'll attack and then maybe next turn we can play Lore Hold Command. Could always stop deck and also transmogrify, which is also a nice way of stopping the Cauldron Familiar, which is often loop since the Familiar never gets a chance to block. Trail of Crumbs, not as bad as a Mayhem Devil would have been. Although that is gonna potentially find a Mayhem Devil later. Alright, let's attack and then play history. Command also goes upstairs. So yeah, who knows, maybe next turn we can still figure out a way to close out the game. Command can also give our Night Token haste. So we'll most likely be able to transform Legion's Landing, but if we can get access to 5 mana before attacking, it's even better. Pona did find a second Witch's Oven, so that's one more iteration of the familiar loop each turn. And another familiar. Alright, so they've got two permanent chum blockers essentially. At least they're empty handed, but the trail's gonna change that pretty quickly. Alright, we found our land. So, if we deal three to our opponents, they can still sacrifice a food token as well. So I feel like making an extra creature is going to be better. It's going to transform the Legion's Landing. And then we can try to go wide with more tokens from Landing too. But our opponent should survive here. They'll have to sacrifice a food token before damage. And at least they didn't get to leverage Trail of Crumbs. So they're at one. And they're gonna bring back Cauldron Familiar now. And leave the other one in the graveyard for the time being. Right, opponent goes digging with Trail of Crumbs, so their draw wasn't too exciting, presumably. Finds another trail. Although what they need is something like a Mayhem Devil here to try and take out some of our creatures. We also have a Castle Embrith available to pump the team. So the cats are gonna block our two Knight Tokens. We'll attack. And we'll see if a Castle Embrith activation is enough. Opponent can bring back two cats, up to five, up to eight. But I think they're still taking a lethal here. Alright, there we go. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. 
a bit light on creature tokens, but we do have the Transmogrify to potentially find Elishnorn, so ideally we draw into any of our cards that make several tokens. And in the meantime, we've got a turn one Legion's Landing, turn two Intangible Virtue. Facing a turn one Lenor Elves, another Legion's Landing. It is legendary, but we still get to make an extra token. Ooh, a turn to Old Growth Troll. So the blue mana might be for the new counter spell slash fight spell from Strixhaven. So that's something we'll have to watch out for. Could potentially counter Transmogrify or fight a token we're targeting in response. Take four for now. And our opponent passes. So, if we play Intangible Virtue, it might get countered, but that's probably all right if that means Transmogrify resolves. Could also try and bait with Allegiance Landing. Even though we could have potentially transformed the first one and then played another landing, which can potentially give us a one extra mana boost in a future turn. All right, there's the Decisive Denial, as we suspected. But we do get to transform our land and could even cast a Lorehold Command next turn. Opponent trades. And yeah, if they can't deal with Transmogrify, we grab our Elish Norn. And that's probably game over. Opponents empty handed since they had to take a few mulligans. Attack for six, and yeah, opponents will have a hard time recovering from this. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Painless mana base with triple vantage. And then we've got our Transmogrify ready to go. Stitcher's Applier points towards the Reanimator deck. So hopefully the opponent can put their own Elish Nord in play before we can. Otherwise we're gonna have a bad time. So it looks like Esper Colors. Currently no scary creature to reanimate. Tangible Virtue also a good one. Uh, maybe we'll Dragon Fodder here and keep the Raise the Alarm for later. Don't really care whether or not the opponent attacks with a Stitcher Supplier, because I'm probably going to play History next turn. Making them use Fatal Push is not a bad thing, since that can potentially be a blowout if we go for Transmogrify. So next turn we could already go for Transmogrify. Fracture destroys our history, fair enough. So we don't get a second knight. Top deck the Elishnorn. Opponent still has some mana untapped. So I don't feel like going for Transmogrify. We also don't have that much of a board presence yet. I think I just play Virtue and of turn race and then maybe next turn go for Transmogrify. And then I probably don't even want to attack, since if we let them mill over Elishnorn, we're in trouble. So, play Virtue, pass, and then next turn we'll go for it. A Liliana, Waker of the Dead, so now our opponent's tapped out at least. They can make us discard if they want, or they can take out one of my creatures. That's fine. Don't you just love the smell of death? <laughs> Alrighty. And then I could play around Mana Tithe by playing my land, or I could keep land in hand to potentially discard, although probably fine discarding Elishnorn. Norn. 
supply our dice. Let's see what it mills. Ritual of Soots, our opponent does have sweepers in there, but those wouldn't be able to kill Elishnorn. Take out Liliana, hit for four. And we can play another intangible virtue next turn, potentially. Alright, Mortify takes care of Elishnorn. But our opponent's gonna need one of those Rituals of Soots to survive here. There's nothing in the graveyard to reanimate that's really gonna stabilize them. Opponent brings back Stitcher. And there's Elishnorn. Although now with double virtue, our creatures would have been safe. And a third virtue is gonna make this game pretty straightforward to close out. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. We could use an extra land or two. But otherwise we've got a pretty strong curve of tokens and pump effects with intangible virtue and double reinforcements. So we'll kick things off with... Hmm, maybe Dragon Fodder. And then wait on Friendship until we have maybe Virtue in play or next turn we can play Friendship and attack. We'll see. Alright, we did not draw land, but we did draw Legion's Landing, so next turn that can turn into a land. So, I think that means we want to Forbidden Friendship here. And attack for three. Opponent does have a Fatal Push, so luckily still leaves us with three tokens to transform Landing next turn. Although we won't be able to go Landing plus Virtue before attackers. And now a thought is gonna mess with our hand as well. Probably goes for either landing or virtue here. Takes a virtue. And a gross parallel her opponent on a Sultai deck. Alright, land is good. So now we can play Legion's Landing pre combats attack, transform it, and play history. And hope the opponent doesn't have a sweeper. And then reinforcements. It's gonna be quite strong. Opponent brainstorms, end of turn. So they're digging for a sweeper or who knows what else. At least if they cast a sweeper, we still get our second knight token from history. And yep, they found the extinction event on Even, so that's gonna wipe our board. But we still get to reinforcements. And our Adonto also gives us some late game. Another fatal push. So our opponents with no shortage of interaction. Luckily, Blast Zone comes into play with a counter on it, so it can't destroy tokens. And luckily the Scarab Gods can't reanimate any of our tokens, so for now it's just a 5-5 that's very difficult to remove. So, yeah, probably still worth it to reinforcements and essentially deal 6 to my opponents. So they fall to 3, and then now we can leverage Aldanto. And we're just one land away from potentially hard casting Elishnorn. Hydroid for two. Okay, it's pretty good. A blocker, some extra life gain, and probably not in a spot where we can realistically attack. So we'll just have to sit back, make some more tokens. Opponent's gonna brainstorm. Let's see if they have a shuffle effect to go with it. Bojuka Bog exiles my graveyard, that's fine. Wow. 
So I don't think we want to tank just yet. End of turn growth peril. Scarab God doesn't have any creatures to reanimate. And Krays is going to attack, so they might have found another extinction event here. Mm, they sure did. Well, we'll just keep on making tokens. Forbidden Friendship is nice and all, but still doesn't let me attack, so I think I keep it in hand. Or we could play around a Thought Seize, but our opponent Thought Seizing on 4 life seems unlikely. I guess I should still cast it, just because then we can attack with the Human Token, potentially. Although I'm likely going to wait one more turn. Narset part reveals. Okay. I know 88 ways to defeat with thoughtfulness before action. Finds Yahani's expertise. Yet another sweeper here. His opponent came prepared for the tokens matchup. But yeah, they can attack us. It's for life. Raise the alarm at least we can cast end of turn, so dodge is a sorcery speed sweeper. Narset can dig for another card, although the passive isn't super relevant here, unless your opponent casts a commit memory. Brainstorm, yep. And a Nissa who shakes the world. That's a good one. So now the clock is ticking and we don't have much time to end this game. I'll take the 8 damage and then yeah, I hope to top deck Transmogrify or another Heroic Reinforcements. Just to land. So I can put my opponent to 1 and then Chump Scarab God to survive since we'll gain a bit of life from the vampires as well. I think that's worth it. Opponent cycles Shark Typhoon for one, so that's an extra blocker. So that's gonna leave them at two life. Alright, just got to hope to dodge instant speed removal on my vampire token and then we probably still need to top deck something. Yeah, we unfortunately flooded a bit and we did have Adonto as a nice mana sink, but we could have used an extra castle alongside it. Could always top deck Elishnorn or Transmogrify to maybe get us out of this. But now a fail of wishes. Searching for a sideboard card is probably game over. And there's a commit memory to go with Narset as well. But commit can just bounce or token before we get a chance to block and that's going to be game over. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand, assuming we can cast our Transmogrify on turn 4, which is going to require two more lanes, but no shortage of tokens to target with it. Facing a Lurus deck, Black Red, so might be a more disruptive version as opposed to Spirit Dancer. Turn one, if near dead lands, and a Knight of the Ebon Legion. All right, land is good, and yeah, we'll go with an end of turn raise. Could also try to ambush Knight of the Ebon Legion by double blocking. If they have instant speed removal, that could go poorly. 
but getting instant speed removal out of their hand to clear a path for transmogrify is also not a bad idea. So I think I'm still in favor. Alright, that worked out. And we'll play history. And then hope to draw land four so we can either transmogrify or virtue plus friendship first. Opponent just puts Solurus in their hand. Ah, top deck Delishnor, not quite what we wanted here. But a second history of Benalia looks strong. Opponent could also be a Death Shadow deck if they're playing if near Deadlands, so reducing their life total might be helping them in casting Death Shadow. Opponent plays Lurus, although they didn't have enough black mana to also play Knight. And just in case my opponent has a Shock here, I think I target the Summoning Sick Knight token with Transmogrify as opposed to the 1-1 one -one token. There's Elish Norn, and that should be game. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. I guess we're missing double white for history, but uh, we've got a lot of white sources we can draw into. Opponent on goblins, and luckily there's our inspiring vantage to the rescue. And then Heroic Reinforcements could hit pretty hard next turn, even lets us attack with our Summoning Sick Knight token. A Warchief setting up to play an early Muxus. I might actually wait another turn to Reinforcements, and then for now just hit for two. I guess I could attack with everyone thanks to the castle. And then we'll just go with another History and Satyr's Cunning. Opponent is forcing us to pump with Castle. And then next turn I can still Cunning into Reinforcements and be able to attack with our Satyr. Wily Goblin into Goblin Matron. Let's see what that searches up. Gets Prospectors so they can ramp out their Muxus. Well, we have a pretty good attack here with reinforcements. It's going to put the opponent under a lot of pressure. And the more goblins they're forced to jump with, the fewer goblins they have for Prospector to generate mana, and her opponent packs it in. Alright, so we got to see our red-white token stack in action, and yes, you could see we don't necessarily need Transmogrify to win games, sometimes either Intangible Virtue or Heroic Reinforcements bumping the team can be enough, and then the extra utility from our Castle Embereth especially, quite nice at helping us close out games too. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.